Welcome to Entrepods, the most cutting edge podcast for entrepreneurs and investors. We answer the hottest question today. So now what? We are radically civilized with a focus on durable solutions that make the most positive impacts in your business, financial, personal, and community life. The world right now belongs to entrepreneurs. Today, we'll show you through our expert conversations that matter, the limitless opportunities you have right now to live the life of your dreams. The best version of you and your business starts now. Welcome to Entrepods. Hello, Entrepods. Well, it's another wonderful week for entrepreneurs and investors and business owners. And we're all coming out of, you know, the dark times into this brave new world. And today's guest is going to show us how we can budget. And he's going to do it in a much more automated way on the coolest format possible. So the person we have on today is one of those rare individuals that just seems like get it right really young. He was 18 years old and ended up flipping like five houses. Yeah, I know. It's hard not not to hate, right? When you hear stories like that. But then he went on and he spent a whole uh, career teaching people about money. And for more than 10 years, he's been a financial planner, but he's more like a fun type of financial planner. And now he teaches people about cash envelope systems because he launched the coolest app, Cube Money. So today we have on the show, Ryan Clark with cubemoney.com. That's Q-U-B-E. M O N E Y dot com. And I can't wait for everybody, for us all to try this cool app and learn how to budget. Hey, Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Okay. So let's just get it out of the way. Like, how did you become so entrepreneurial so young when the rest of us are all just trying to figure it out? You know, it's, it's funny. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I always had this, this desire to, I mean, originally it was, I wanted to get stuff. And I remember the first foray I had in anything, I was like 10 and I was sent this magazine of all these cool things you could buy. If you'd go and sell this company stationary door to door or however, but I was like, Oh yeah. And they had cool toys and gifts like Nintendo's uh, accessories for your bike. And I was like, I want all this stuff. So I did, I ordered a little kit. You had to buy their stuff. And then you, you know, you buy it at wholesale and sell it at retail. And I went and I sold all my neighbors and I got the accessories for my bike. That was like at 10. And then at 12, I did a, um, a snow removal company with a good friend of mine. He had a snow blower and I had a four wheeler with a plow or rather our parents did. Right. And we thought, well, let's, let's do it. And so, I don't know. I just, I kind of just got into it. And I loved that I always had money and I got comfortable with that idea that I could do work and I could get paid and it was, that was okay. And I had a great work ethic and I'd mow lawns in the summer and it just kind of started like that. So. I think it's really great because you have to have very supportive parents too, when you're like this, there are some of the, you know, a lot of us, uh, there are people listening that grew up with parents that, that were not entrepreneurial at all. And they're like, you know, what are you doing kid? And they had to, they had to do that. So it was really awesome that your parents you know, allowed you at 10, um, because you're thinking it's 10 going door to door, right? Like yeah. in today's age, that's almost like you'll get a CP. <laughs> you'll get a CP. <laughs> oh, do you have to go with them and do everything? So it's a little, it's, but that's really uh, super cool. And then, um, you ended up going into, into finance. So tell me a little bit about the journey and then we'll talk about the book too. Cause I forgot to mention, um, on top of all this other cool stuff he does, he's, he's an author as well. So we'll, we'll go into that. So tell me a little bit about your journey. Well, let me echo what you're saying with the parents, because you're exactly right. Both of my parents were very encouraging. First off, they did, there's, there's a, I think, a problem in American culture. And I've I recently read a book that talks about this, where we coddle, and the, the book's called The Coddling of the American Mind. And it's, a, it's been a thing since the 90s, uh, where, where parents do coddle their parents. They don't allow them to fail. They don't allow them to go and and um, free range. There's actual free range laws in some in some states that are against or for this. Um, but my parents let me do that. They let you know, I, I could go door to door by myself and knock and talk to neighbors. And they and so they were. They were very supportive. You know, I was waking up at 4 a.m. to go to go uh, shovel snow, and they were supportive. And they buy gas and just how can I help you? And they mostly just stayed stayed out of my way, honestly. But but in, but were very encouraging. And, and supportive. So uh, I, the, um, 
I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that is a really important fact or a factor in the whole thing. But the rest of the story is, yeah, I went, um, when I was 16, I bought a real estate course from Carlton Sheets. If anyone's heard of that before or him. Yeah. He was mm -hmm. big in the 90s, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I bought that at 16, tried his program at 16, got totally rejected on the phone by somebody because I was asking really detailed questions about their finances. And they're like, nope. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, and I got scared. <laughs> um, so I didn't do anything. I put that on the shelf, but got back to it at 17. And then I, when I was five days after my 18th birthday, I bought my first property. Um, so that was Crazy. fun. But then, yeah, through that process, I, I did, I, I really enjoyed studying money, but what I found I, that I even, that I loved even more was seeing people's lives change because of the advice, because of the, the different philosophy, because of the strategies that I was able to teach them. And, um, and that's what I really fell in love with was that, that real change. Yeah. That's such an incredible story. And it's, <laughs> I can just imagine a 16 year old, you know, I have a son who's, set, who's 15, but getting on the phone and trying to grill someone, you know, to get them qualified and, you know, for whatever I'm doing and, yeah. you know, just the instant reaction for that. But it takes a lot of wherewithal, wherewithal, I think that you, you went and did it again. Cause you know, for some, especially when you're young, like that rejection stings a lot harder when you're 16 than when you're like, you know, war veteran, you know, in your thirties and, and, and up. So, so that, that's pretty cool. So again, so anybody's listening, it, it's rejections. Okay. You can just deal with it and, and, and do it again. If you know the, you know, the education is solid then and what you're doing is solid, then, then you can go. So yeah. when we talk about this and we talk about money, because money is a big limiting belief for many people or what they were taught about money. You know, I was just talking to, um, Amanda Abea, she's a millennial that works with money and she actually wanted to learn about money. And so she became a financial writer and she became very successful for like eight years. And she wrote about finances and the traditional methods to do it. The only problem was she would, she became very popular and everybody, she's an expert and expert, and she was doing all of her strategies and it wasn't working for her. And so she had to had to change. She had to li literally fix her mindset from an entire media complex and financial system that was saying, yes, this is what you're supposed to do. Cause she was like, yeah, but this is not making me fulfilled or happy or wealthy and changing that and moving forward. So it seems like you did a little bit of that too with budgeting and trying to teach people that. So let's delve into where you're at right now and the the b word <laughs> the budget the budget <laughs> sure nobody we likes b word we're talking yeah, about yeah <laughs> that's it that's the b word so anyway let's let's talk about where you're at now with Q cube money and why you decided to create this really cool and very easy to use app and interface which you guys have to look at it it's, it's super cool and what you're accomplishing with it so it's interesting you you uh, set this up with the b word because it's true People don't like to budget, yet everyone says you should budget, but it doesn't work, honestly. It really doesn't. Uh, budgeting doesn't, be, I mean, for a lot of people, for most people that get into budgeting, it's like a diet, right? They'll willpower themselves into it, and but what they're really doing is they're creating a new chore, a new task, a new pain in life. And we don't like pain as humans, right? We try to have less pain, and it's often less painful to deal with no budget, and just haphazard money spending, it's easier, right, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, than to try to force yourself to be meticulous, even though it sounds great and all the gurus talk about it, budgeting sucks, that's, that's the truth. But as I looked at that, so it, I mean, me as the financial coach, as a financial planner, I'm, I was setting up budgets for, for clients because it's obvious that there's great power there because you move from a reactionary type of a person to an intentional type of a person. So that change is significant. Everyone gets that. But the environment I realized was the problem. So for example, if you're living in your home and your house is stuffed with junk food, your environment's wrong because what are you gonna go eat? Junk food, because that's what's easy. It's what's there. If your fridge all of a sudden was, was redone and it's filled with healthy compartmentalized organized foods you know easy to make healthy meals what are you going to eat healthy stuff right because that's what's easy and so one of the things i've got this book i didn't write this one <laughs> but this this great book right here if anyone has not read this oh. book 
Atomic Habits by James Clear. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Um, but one of the things he talks about specifically in there is if you want to change your habit, change your environment. That, that uh, he talks about how smart people, successful people are not any smarter or any uh, more disciplined perhaps than anyone else. What they're good at is picking the right environments to operate out of. And it's that environment that makes it easy to make, the, to make better decisions. So the environment was the, the main problem of, or is, is the main problem with most people's budgeting. The banking system is not designed for budgeting. It doesn't support or promote any good financial principles. So what Cube does, <clears throat> Cube Money, we took the most effective, uh, uh, yeah, m m most effective budgeting system on the planet ever created. For the last hundred years, every guru talks about it. It's the cash envelope budgeting method, and that that method is very powerful for multiple reasons. But one of the th one of the things that, that makes it so powerful is that it creates its own environment. Right to budget, you have to use it. It it is the bank and the budget. Right, if you're going to spend, you spend out of it because it's cash. And you know you have each envelope with with a purpose: food, entertainment, clothing, whatever. And to spend, you actually remove the money out of it, so it becomes the budget and the bank. So that had to be a big element. But the most powerful part of that system is that it's the only system out there that actually required its use before a purchase. Everything else is reactionary. Right? You spend, mm -hmm. and then it tells you what you did or what you did wrong, <laughs> right? Um, and, and that's also a huge problem. If, if people want to move into an intentional, purposeful state of living, you have to have your environment operate that same way, and the banking system doesn't. It's reactionary. Mm -hmm. It's full of lots of marketing and ease and all the things that destroy oh, good Oh, feel budget. good, but everything yeah. is all feel good, you know, like it's, you know, uh, uh, don't limit yourself, you know, don't, don't No, you don't want to have a scarcity mindset, right? Yeah, now, um, that's actually, that's actually true. You don't want to have a scarcity mindset. You do want to talk about abundance, but they're not exactly polar opposites, but right. marketing would let you think that if you budget at all, well, you are not having, you're having a scarcity mindset. That's it. It's this black or white polar opposite extremes. But meanwhile, the reality is there's this wonderful area in the middle, this beautiful sparkling silver gray area that you can be in and be perfectly happy. And, you know, we should call it something up. I, I like cash envelope because that just seems more like, oh, there's cash envelopes of money. I'm getting an envelope because, you know, there's people in some cultures get married and they get these envelopes of cash. I'm thinking of mobsters, but, you know, other, <laughs> other, other cultures do get that. I'm thinking of that movie. What was it? Um, good fellows right and she just kept on getting all these envelopes worth of cash right so that uh -huh. just seems more abundant she didn't have to do anything but put on a dress and show up and just you know get all the money but <laughs> it seems better than budget but yeah well a, it's what you're saying is actually really really powerful because the um if, if someone wants to move into that state of of intentionality and purposeful living mm -hmm. um creating those envelopes creates purpose for your money and so that abundance concept you talked about, yeah, it's not abundant like, oh, just spend because you want to let it go free. There, I mean, th there's an element of that, but what really what it is, is, is when you go to a carnival and you're not sure how much money you have to spend because it's all inside of one bucket and you're trying to do that mental math thinking, okay, I've got that bill that's due and there's that and there's that. Yeah, I think I could spend an extra 50. And then you forget about that quarterly insurance payment that you have in your overdraft. That's insanity, that's painful. That's reactionary living. But when you can go to that carnival and say, look, guys, I've got 300 bucks in an envelope that I planned to spend on entertainment and we're here at the carnival. Let's have some fun. You want cotton candy? Let's do it. And you're not having that emotional uh, fight because you planned to spend. That changes your relationship with money and that creates that abundant living. Not saying, yeah, just let it go free. Because I've heard those things also and that, that's what you're getting at where it's like, well, can you really be abundant? Well, now what about the discipline? And so the, 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 that middle ground where those two meet is in purpose. When you proactively say, I'm gonna spend 300 bucks on fun. I'm gonna spend 500 bucks on clothing. Now you're free because you went through and you built a plan, you gave every dollar a job. We've all heard that with budgeting. Yeah. You give every dollar a job and then you can do that. The trick with this though, to really make it work, because we've heard of these concepts in, in mm -hmm. budgeting is to have it connect with the bank. It can't right. be two separate things because you could have a great budget built over here 
with all the purpose in the world, but if your bank account still says $10,000 or whatever, where's the real money? And, it's, it, and the, the bank has the real money, so it's so easy just to blow it. So what Cube does is it creates those separate envelopes. When you spend, you have to choose which envelope, which cube we call them, you're spending out of, and then that purpose is realized because you're spending directly out of that one category. So it's real, it makes all the money and the whole concept real. And I want to talk about how powerful the word purpose is. You know, I'm, I've built out a training, you know, what's your path of purpose in your job? If I have to come in because everything's failing, you're not making money. And if you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter if you're a solopreneur or you have a huge team, I have to always reverse engineer the processes in the business back to your path of purpose, right? So you purposeful spending is very different than let's just blow it or I think or maybe or whatever. Purposeful spending is is really freeing because there's no worry with that. You've already figured out what your purpose is for that. And this, this money that you've brought in is going to go towards your purpose. And you don't have to be locked into it. It's not like someone's going to slap your wrist and scream at you or anything. You can always change as, as you need and as budgets go up. But you know, what your needs go, but when you're purposeful, you make more progress in the areas that are important to you, you know? So, I, you know, I just love the word purpose because we all have our, pur you know, we have our purpose that we're here on this planet. You know, what is our value we're giving to the world? You know, like you, it's financial planning and finances and having people be able to live a life that they don't feel like they're completely limited and sad and struggling. And, you know, they can afford the things that they need to afford. You know, uh, not everything's free, you know, it's reality and all that other stuff like that, you know, but yeah. that's okay too. Because when you break through those limiting beliefs and realize that money's out there and it flows in and then it flows out and it goes to help all these people, like all those carnies, you know, get, you know, tooth care. I'm kidding. In the <laughs> South, there's not a single carny that has any teeth. So, you know, you, you're just like, hey, here you go. Here, let you sit. I'm going to buy all that cotton candy for you, mister. But that's terrible. I'm sure that there's wonderful carnies out there. If you're a carny, I did not mean to offend you. As a carny, I'm talking about, you know, a joke. Stay with us and we'll be right back after the break. The Entrepods team is excited to announce the new Bootstrap Bootcamp to answer all your questions about the how and when and push you to be the best version of yourself. Watch as your business becomes more profitable in the next 30 days with industry experts to help you along the way. We teach you powerful strategies that companies around the world implement that are refined for small business owners like yourself. Sign up today at entrepods.com forward slash bootstrap dash bootcamp. So yeah. <laughs> what made you decide to go from financial planning to I'm going to do an app, you know, this very technological sort of IT, you know, I mean, there are people who spend decades like trying to develop great apps. And here you are kind of cranking one out. Like, what's up with that? So I've always been uh, a little crazy, you could say. Some people would call me that because okay. I'll see an opportunity and I'll think, I'm going to do that. Um, and it just goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning. My, you know, I, I lived on the bench here in this valley and there's more snow there. And I had a, a snow plow and my buddy had a blower and we're like, we live around a ton of old people. I think we're going to, into business. Um, but is, is that the same kind of idea? The, the Genesis story precisely though, is that I was working with a couple that was making a quarter million a year. I was writing my book at the time also. And, and my book was always designed to be kind of a, a client education book. So I did write a full on book. It was, it, that's a project. Anyone that's written a book, my respects, because it is a tough thing. It's really hard. I have, um, it is tough. You think you've got it all in there, but then getting it out and organizing it. Detail. Yeah. And then you hate everything that you write. Like, you're like, this is so great. And then like two days later, you go back to reread it and you're like, I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. No, I, the, my, my copy, it's, it's over here and it's just filled with post-it notes. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to read this or not. Uh, I don't know. So the but book yeah, is The Order of Wealth, guys, just yeah. FYI, The Order of Wealth by Ryan Clark, just so you know. And it's a good book. The, the problem with it, I'll just be honest, is it didn't have a good cash flow section. And it bothered me because I didn't have anything new or unique or powerful. I just, ugh, it was weak. Mm. And it was, it, and I was in that mindset. And I started working with this couple making a quarter million a year out of Texas. 
And um, I remember one day the husband called me, he was driving home on the freeway and he calls, he says, Ryan, I can't let the, ne the, the next 10 years be like my last 10 years. Cause he had a whopping 30 grand after making two and a half million dollars in 10 years, he had 30 grand to his name and he couldn't let the next 10 years be like the last he said. And I said, okay, sounds like you've got some decent motivation. Let's start. We put together a great budget because their problem was spending. They had the cash flow, right? But it was spending. They had the nicest cars. They had the box office seats. They had all the stuff. It was spending. They had a spending problem. Got them on a budget, used the best, the latest and greatest app that I thought would really help them. This thing really was, was designed to help with spending control. And sure enough, about three, four months in, what happened? They, they fell off. Mm -hmm. because it also was ancillary to the real money. The real money was over here. It was easy for them to drop off and go spend the real money. And I was so frustrated with this. I, 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 I went to a friend of mine, we had lunch and I said, Richard, this is his name, is there a way to build a payment system around the cash envelope model? Because I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to work like cash envelopes. I gave him the idea of how we could digitize it. And we spent in that lunch meeting, right, normally just lunch, we spent three hours oh. <laughs> and had a whole yellow pad full of notes and ideas on how we could do it. Six months later, we filed for a patent and we went along. That's when Cube was born. Wow. So, but yeah, basically for me, it was, it was that frustration. I knew what I wanted. It didn't exist in the marketplace. And I thought, I'm going to go build this. And I saw a path to, to be able to do it. And so I went for it. Do you feel like, okay, so in my thoughts, so I'm thinking about this couple, right? So they're having fun. They're enjoying their life. They're enjoying your money, right? And that's what everybody wants to do. I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy my money. But at one point they started thinking, you know what? There are things that we actually need that I don't see us getting right now. And I'm getting a little bit worried, right? So then they're not enjoying the money as much because now there's this worry right so now you got to fix it you want to go back to enjoying the money and and and, and have having more fun right so i think a purely hedonistic level so they do the budget but the old way was still a pain point so my question is how is having the envelopes different to keep people on board what do you think is the psychological difference that keeps them to where they still feel the enjoyment and it's not as big as like you know you you love bread, bread and cheese, try keto, you know, like, <laughs> I know, because I'm, I'm on keto, and it's tough. And now they've made high fiber, you know, keto friendly bread, and it's like a godsend, you know, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so much better. Anyway, so, so tell me a little bit about when you were talking about, you know, the pain point, you know, people who are like, I know I need this, I want this. But for some reason, all the all the prescriptions you're giving me seem more painful than the illness, right? So how did you give them a prescription that didn't have so many side effects? Yeah, um, so several things in there. There's communication. Communication is, is, is a big factor. Hmm. There's also the planning part of being purposeful. So what happened with this couple, and this happens to everybody, is it's just easier to spend out of the bank. I don't want to have to take the, the time and do the pain of putting the, the budget together and then the pain of managing it and tracking it and making sure it's all categorized correctly and all that. And, uh, and then I don't love the limitation because it says I can only spend $500 on food, but I know I've got 10 grand over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to spend the money. So, so several factors. So what we did with cube. Oh, and by the way, the end story uh, for this couple is pretty sad. They actually did divorce about a year later because well, several things, but money became a really big issue. Money, when someone spends in, in, in a partnership of any kind, whether it's business or, or a, a family, when someone spends and the other one doesn't agree, that creates a trust problem, right? You stole money from me because I wanted to do this with it, right? So communication is oh, yeah. huge. So at Cube, what, what the app does is it actually notifies you when any when, when either partner makes a change. Like, so if we have, if we planned $500 in food, and three hundred dollars for the Disneyland vacation, and if I go out and take money from Disneyland because I need to buy more food, it's sending a notification to her saying, "Hey, Ryan just did this." Ooh. Just FYI, right? Yeah. But you want to have that open, free, transparent 
communication around it. Instead of finding out a week later when she gets a, a bill or is looking at the statement, she's like, you spent how much on what? And you stole from me? Because you know Disneyland was my trip. I was planning on that. That's that it's a huge trust violation, right? So you want to have that open and free flowing communication so the conversations can happen quickly, almost real time about, about those issues. Man, I think every marriage needs this because I got to tell you, communication about money is a huge one. And it's amazing the pushback that people will get on something like that. Like what? They don't get to know every little thing I do and blah, 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 blah. blah. And we're talking about money, you know, shared yeah money this isn't well i mean this isn't stating you can have one you know your little fun money account and that's your like special account or whatever like that but when you're talking about shared money it's important but also to think about how many people are uh you know like that can avoid so many problems like i'm just thinking of you know okay messy tiktok right so I had no idea he had a whole other family and he was taking this and this and this, and he had been paying this and this and this and this. And you're like, how did you not know all that money was gone? Yeah. Because they have an entire other person that they're dating and doing everything else with and blah, 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 blah. And when you, when you have these blinders on, which you have been indoctrinated wrongly and maliciously by a portion of society that's going to tell you no 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 be yourself you know like like you want to be yourself but to the point that you're consistently harming yourself from these blinders that you want to keep on rather than opening yourself up with a different type of trust and openness and communication you could have stopped that before it ever even happened yeah absolutely and you do that with with the communication you do that also so every every relationship also needs a degree of autonomy and freedom so it's a really great idea. And I see a lot of, a lot of gurus talk about this and I agree with it, that each one of you wants to have like his and her money. And it's just your blow money. And if I want to buy, I don't know, cheese it's all day long, like my daughter would like to do, then that's it, you know? And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And I don't have to nitpick what it is, but the thing that gives me peace is that I know that there's a limit. So it's $500 that's going to be invested into Cheez-Its this month or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, but I know there's a cap. And as long as everyone feels good about the limits of each cube, each category, then there's great peace because there's an overall plan. And yeah. that's the thing you were asking. Um, Cheez-Its, well, okay. In, 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 Taking <laughs> other people out on dates to steakhouse, not so much. Like, not so much. Uh, you still want to have transparency in there, but right. yeah, you also want to have some freedom yeah, if they're having another family, that's a whole different issue. Or, or, or an addiction or something. I mean, it's not yeah. just that. Anything that's hidden. Yeah, anything there, that's hidden. Any, anything that's hidden. If you have to hide it, it's not good. It's not mm -hmm. healthy. It's not good. It's not good for you. If you're ashamed of it, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> well, if you feel like you have to hide it or if, if yeah. they knew about this, then they might judge you or something. There's a problem there. You should be, you should also yeah. feel safe enough in your, in your relationship that you can talk about those things. And if you don't, then there's a problem. There's a relationship problem. Yeah, but it's that's, not, it's not an app. That's the problem. It's uh, yeah. you've got some other issues going yeah, on. Yeah. Counseling. I'm, I'm big on counseling. There's smart mm -hmm. people that deal with stuff all the time. Go, go talk to somebody. It's good. Um, but hopefully what, what Cube Money can do is, is help facilitate that communication and align a plan so that, that the, the, the partnership can come together, define exactly how they want their, their money to go and do that together instead of when you're at the store and you're staring at that, you know, that great deal on the new Apple Watch, right? You want to you make your decisions on how the money is going to be spent alone. <laughs> it's just you and the partner and the app. But you make those decisions and then when they do change and they will, everyone's getting notified everyone knows what's happening but also ideally you're designing that that plan in a plan that's going to work for you right you've got you've got hey, your own great. money that's your blow money you've got so each one of you has some freedom but you also know that it's this much on that and that much on this and and we're saving for this and we've got this goal out here that we're working towards because what'll happen like if i'm at the store and i see that new apple watch and i'm really excited because i just got to have it right um i might have money in my tech cube for, for for something, but I also may see I don't have quite enough. And now I have to think, okay, where am I gonna take the money from? And in that process of priorities, I'm gonna say, well, should I take it from the Disneyland vacation cube? Oh no, mm -mm. That, mm -hmm. she would really be upset if I did that. Mm -hmm. What about her clothing cube? Mm -mm. No, I'd probably be on the couch for a, a month. 
you know, and so you're going to go through and you're going to weigh out your priorities and it helps in that decision making process because you can see where you two had planned to put your money. Now, in the end, you might take it from food, maybe, or maybe you decide I don't need this right now. Yeah. And that's the kind I'm of thinking we would have a need. barbecue meat fund because I got to tell you, anytime he goes to the store, he's like coming back with a big old slab. So, but brisket was on sale for like this and this, and this, and then this and this, and we'll be, and I'm just like, man, you know, cause he, you know, he'll just barbecue all the time. Right. Yeah. And it's great. It's great. It is. Our, but our food, our food thing would be like, okay, no, we're going to, yeah. we're going to, we're going to wait. We have, we have a ton of users that have Amazon cubes. Oh like yeah. Cause you can make Amazon. any cube you want. You can be yeah. whatever your deal is. Like there's crafters, like those resin jewelry art people that I see that I'm so jealous of that I bought a resin kit and I, and I haven't really used it. I admit that <laughs> it's been there for months. I, I mean, I haven't bought an organizer. I was going to sell jewelry. I was going to go. No, yeah. No, okay, I, yeah. I did it, did it once and it was really messy and I had to wear a respirator and it got everywhere and it was hard to clean. And I was like, how do they do this? Yeah, those things are messy. My my grandpa <laughs> used to do stuff with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it though. Eventually I'll do something. I don't know what it is, but it's gonna be awesome. You guys just wait. Awesome. Okay. But yeah, you can make a cube for anything. And and that's actually another interesting point. A lot of the budgeting systems try to categorize based on the industry's mm -hmm. classification. Which See, I hate that. Work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody is different. There are people who collect stamps, and that's their whole life, and that's their income. So their 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 envelopes or cubes or whatever are going to be completely different than mine. And totally. so I, I like I like I like that idea, but I like this entire concept. You know, I've only recently just become even familiar with the idea of even cash envelopes. So for for those of you who are out there, they're probably like, "What is this?" Well, it's just a different way to be able to make your money work for you. You know, we talk about this all the time. And who was it? Chris Noggle, the HGTV Risky Builder guy. So I remember talking to him, and he was like don't have your money just sitting on your couch eating cheetos watching your netflix you always want your money working for you and most people think well i have no nothing i have no money right but in reality once you pay more attention to it you find all this little stuff that you really didn't even think even when you're bare bones i'm talking very bare, bare bones because i know i've I've lived very bare bones you guys know me i was homeless and as a teen and and i managed to to do that, but only when I paid attention. It was when I didn't pay attention where things crept up on me, you know. And this is back in the day where you would write checks at the grocery store, and uh, you were so glad that they didn't have the system because they used to just take your check and they didn't scan it or anything. You could just write whatever. And the uh, and their joke was, well, of course I've got money. There's still checks in my checkbook. If y'all don't understand what that means, it's because that ADP system, they used to then scan it and they, and then you would wait and then they would get like a little signal, like a pass or fail, like if this check could be taken or be good. But before that, they didn't even have that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and now, yeah. nowadays people, it's like, oh, there's still limit. I still have money. It's not up above my limit on my card. Free yeah. money. Yeah. 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 And then, and then they're like, what? You know, like just... They can't even believe it. Like that sound. Yeah. Tell me, okay, you know when they put in the new chips for all the all the credit cards, uh -huh. and you put it in, and then it it takes your payment, and then it used to make that gring gring sound that was like a very negative sound, and you would think for two seconds, what what's going on? Is there no money yeah. in my account? They that was so off putting and upsetting for people. They had to change the sound. So now <laughs> chip readers go ding, ding. And, and most chip readers have changed that sound, which I thought was interesting because it used to bug yeah. me too. I'd always be like, what's going on? Yeah, that has nothing to do with anything. I'm just telling you guys. OK, so <laughs> we've been talking with Ryan Clark and of Ryan Clark who's with CubeMoney.com. So that's Q-U-B-E-M-O-N-E-Y. Ryan's a financial planner and was a you know career long entrepreneur, a real estate investor and uh of course, financial planner for, for a decade. And he went to lunch one day and sketched out something. And now it's this major massive app that we're all going to have to use. 
<laughs> it's incredible. Anyway, we're getting to the end. Of, we're, we're actually, we went a little bit over, but that's okay. That's okay. Cause this was a good show. Is there anything that you want to leave us with or any tip about how people could start like right now thinking about making a change with how they're, they're working with their money? I'd say, remember it's the environment. If you if, like, there's a lot of entrepreneurs on this, on this podcast um, if you're wanting to make a, a big change for your personal life, for your business, make sure that the environments that you're operating out of, including your money, are going to support that type of um, that type of goal. So remember the environments. I love it. I love it, guys. And I love you here at Entrepods. Again, we've been talking with Ryan Clark at cubemoney.com. That's Q-U-B-E-M-O-N-E-Y.com. As always, we're going to have all the links, how to get to him on the podcast. It'll be right underneath this episode. It'll be on YouTube and every single podcast listening platform. And if you love this, if you're just like, wow, this is a new concept, like it, you know, it is for a lot of people, or even if you knew about this, please like, give us five stars, share, and go give us a review. That's how I keep on getting cool innovators like Ryan back on the show so I can have him out for here. We can educate and we can all just live more abundant lives. Thank you guys again for joining us on Entrepods and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. And please go give us a five-star rating on your preferred listening platform if you enjoyed the show. This helps us reach more listeners like you and keep booking amazing guests. If you'd like to join our growing Entrepods community, want our social media links to like or share, or inquire about one-on-one -on -one strategy calls with our host, Jennifer, please visit Entrepods.com. See you next time. And here's to you and your best life imaginable.